what is the the motivation that keeps you going? <laughs> like, is is this what you love to do the most, the creative part? I think it's such a great question. I, again, I never set out to be a content creator because I look at myself as entrepreneur first. I love creating, I, like seeing ideas turn from an idea to a physical product. I think it's super cool. And then people using it and benefiting from it, whether it's clip and hair extensions and now with our business that we've been focusing on intelligent change, where we have, you know, products like five minute journal, productivity planner, affirmation cards, so many other products now because we've expanded in the last few years. So that is my, has always been my main focus, but then because I realized that when you put out a product, again, people want to know more about you. They resonate with who you are as a human. And then I would come across these people in real life. Obviously, you read their messages and all of that on social media. And I think that's beautiful and special. But it's when I meet people in real life and they come up to me and they tell me, you have changed my life, or they cry, or they share all these stories. I almost have this, not guilt, but there's this push that I actually need to share more because I, I always feel like I share such a small part of my life and yeah. what I do and what I can actually share to help people on their journey because I personally come from nothing. I come from very humble upbringing. I don't think I'm any special than any other human being. I'm a college dropout. Again, I don't think in any way I'm better than anyone else. And if I've been able to create a dream life and go from being super broke and I don't want to say miserable. I was never miserable. I've, I've always been optimistic, but like I was living in a scarcity mindset. So if I, if I was able to do that, I truly believe anybody can. And when I come across these people, I just realize I have a bigger mission than the business and I yeah. need to put myself out there more and serve mm -hmm. people. So I look at my creative content, which I never really monetize. Um, I haven't in so many years. The only ever sponsorship I did was with Audible because I love Audible anyways, and I've always promoted them for free when they offered me money. I was like, great, I'll take it. But right. I literally have never done any sponsored videos ever because I always looked at my social media as a place where I connect with my community and I never wanted to lose their trust. So tell me about the story of creating Intelligent Change and the Five Minute Journal, because I think that's a huge success. And I, I think it's it's something that I always look to for inspiration. I mean, what what is that story and why do you think it became so successful? I think any great business is created as a solution of your own personal problem. When people come to me and they say, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur, like what should be my business or project? I always tell them, look at your own life and any challenge or problem that you have and solve it. Solve it with a product and a service and then put it out there because then you will never have to market this business. It's going to be so authentic and genuine. You're just going to share your story and people are going to buy. People who will need it will buy from you. So going back to your question, what was that story with Intelligent Change and 5-Minute Journal is that um, as I told you, when we started Luxie Hair, I come from super humble beginnings. So we, both Alex and I, we didn't grow up with money. And I think when you don't grow up with money, you are sold this idea that when you get money, like all your problems will be solved and you will be happy and life will be perfect. But the reality is not like that. So in our first year at Luxie Hair, we actually made our first million our goal was not to make our first million. We wanted to make 3,000 each so that we can travel to Thailand, have the freedom, mm -hmm. like live the nomadic lifestyle. So for us to make a million dollars was like flying to the moon. So I, I quickly could have anything on my vision board, but because I could have any of it, it it's almost like it's lost its meaning because right. I, then I, I, I realized that, okay, well, all of these things I had on my vision board and I literally created this vision board and a year later, I could buy that bag or shoes or fly on in business class. You know, I could do all, all these things and go to all these places. But then I remember intensely thinking, but why? Why do I need all these things? Are they actually going to make me happy? So basically I had an existential crisis at about 
24, because that's when we started the business, 24 to 25, uh, was that first year. And I became extremely anxious and depressed. And in fact, my creative work, like making the YouTube videos was the, the place where I would go to be happy because I felt it was like an escape for me. But then the success made me really question my reality. What am I here to for what am I just here to sell products? Like, what's the purpose of my life? And as much as I always loved Luxy hair and I saw the purpose, I saw how it made women happy, like women who never could grow their hair or who had really thin hair or who, like myself, were getting married or were going somewhere special, wanted that accessory. You know, I saw the purpose with Luxy hair, but I just felt like there was more. And as I was going through this dark period of my life, I discovered a meditation. Um, it really helped me heal a lot of childhood trauma and like trauma that was stored in my body. So meditation was huge. And then also I discovered gratitude. So Alex has introduced me to um, Tony Robbins, who was very um, inspiring figure on his journey. So I consumed a lot of work of Tony Robbins. And I don't know, how, are you familiar with his work? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. So Tony talks about this thing called um, the hour of power, I believe. And every morning you go on this gratitude walk and it's about an hour. I mean, it can be shorter, but you go out and you verbally express what you're grateful for. And you can say things that you do have in your life, like your body, you can see, you can hear your partner next to you. Or you could say things that you don't yet have, but you want to manifest. And that truly was the most magical part of that practice because we would literally say uh, that we are, and this is at the time when we were just starting the business, like it was in the inception idea. We would say things like, hey, we're making millions of dollars and we're hanging out with Richard Branson and these are our friends and like, this is our lifestyle, we're flying, we're taking boats, you know, like, you know, the dream basically, traveling right. the world. And within a year we were there. I mean, I remember Alex had this crazy opportunity to go to Necker Island, not as a guest, he was working, he was helping a friend to film videos for Necker Cup, but he met Richard Branson literally wow. within that first year. So wow. the power of manifestation, I mean, people have um, different relationship with that word when they hear it, because they think it's all woo woo, of course. Mm -hmm. It's your choice how you take this information. It doesn't mean that you just put it out there, you do nothing. You still have to do the work. But I think having a vision is so important in order to create the reality of your dream. It's like a compass, right? Like you have to have your North Star. If you don't know where you're going, how are you ever going to get there? So... Yeah, that was really, really incredible. There were so many lessons on that journey. And then we realized that, you know, that practice became an important part of what got us to where we were. But then also it was not very sustainable to go out for an hour walk every day. So mm -hmm. then we kind of shortened that practice and we added some other learnings that we discovered from different books, um, like Happiness Adventure, Advantage by Sean Aker. And, you know, it talks about more of the science of why gratitude works. And many people who will read that book, they will read the book and say, wonderful, I should practice gratitude and then close the book and move on to the next book. But there was no workbook to actually practice these things. And in fact, many self-help, or I like to call it them self-growth book, books out there, they maybe will share very valuable information, but oftentimes there aren't enough tools out there. So we set out on this mission to create tools that take these big concepts and break them into simple, beautiful, sustainable products that you can use every day in five minutes a day. And um, when we first printed our first thousand copies of Five Minute Journal, it was just a side project. It was never meant to be anything because we had Luxie hair and that was doing great, growing, growing. And we thought, hey, well, you know, if this doesn't do well, we'll just give them to our friends for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah. And funny enough, we had a business partner, UJ, at the time who eventually we ended up um, parting ways. So now it's just Alex and I who are the co-founders. And um, But at that time, when he was part of the business, he there was an event in Toronto and Tim Ferriss, who, as you know, was our original inspiration with Luxie Hair, he was in Toronto and we gifted him the journal. And at the time, he was going through a very dark period in his life. 
And we said, listen, you've been such a big inspiration and you are actually in the dedication in the five minute journal. So we hope you love this journal. And he absolutely did. Mm -hmm. He's been using it for 13 years. I think he recently mentioned it again in one of his videos. He's mentioned it so many times on his podcast. He's mentioned in his book, Tools of Titans. And obviously that really helped to expose five minute journal to Mm. a whole different demographic. And of course, with my social media presence, um, it exposed it to my audience and the product and the brand grew um, incrementally. And yeah, like we've been doing now for, you know, 10 years, but really we've only been focusing on intelligent change ever since we sold Luxie Hair. So only the last few years. 